let's start with the you know important uh, concept of sludge volume index now this is one of the best uh, experiments uh, and very short experiment uh, related to the uh, performance indicator of spp and this is uh, the experiment uh, which will be most the questions of this experiment uh, will be mostly asked in your examination right in oral examination right it is uh, though it is a simple experimentation but it is a confusing experimentation if you do not understand its application all right if you do not understand what is the objective of doing this experimentation and what are the inferences that we can draw from this experimentation then though the experimentation is very easy to understand uh, in terms of procedure but the interpretation of the results of this experimentations are very very you know uh, difficult or if you do not understand uh, you, you know you will be uh, you 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 will be going on wondering uh, and uh, you can't answer the simple questions that have been asked by the external examiner right so few of the very important terms what we are going to see are uh, you know uh, that you can highlight and you know try to remember that this is to be read and this is this is the type of answer that we need to give that question is to be question is being asked so what is a sludge volume index now sludge volume index is an important parameter i would rather say it is a very important parameter and it is the test that is the daily done in the stp laboratory right so every stp has a laboratory and this is the test that has been continuously uh, no, continuously uh, done every day this particular test is to be done and uh, then only you know uh, so such is the importance of this parameter so sludge volume index is an important parameter used for monitoring the operation of the aeration system so it is also an indicator of performance of these systems right so now very important definition and you uh, know uh, maximum chance to get confused right so many of them do not uh, remember this definition uh, properly so svi is the volume in ml occupied by 1 gram of mixed liquor suspended solids uh you know settled in 30 minutes so now you will be seeing that you know the uh, experimentation the first stage of experimentation here is of 30 minutes and what it is you know what this svi particularly denotes is that svi denotes the volume in ml so you no know, volume will be here will be uh, found out in ml only right so it is the unit of uh, measurement of volume ml so volume of ml ml occupied by 1 gram of mlss right now we have seen what is suspended solid but you no know, we haven't seen what is mixed liquor suspended solids or mlss so that we are going to see i think that in uh, you know uh, in uh, theory lecture mali sir would have been mali sir would have uh, definitely covered this particular terminology of mlss because uh, you no know, you are studying i guess asp in your uh, theory part so mlss is one of the most important terminology so uh, a very simple definition svi is the volume in ml occupied by 1 gram of mlss settled in 30 minutes so if i am having 1 gram of mlss how how much volume does it require for settlement in 30 minutes is nothing but the svi very simple interpretation like right? so mixed liquor sample for svi test is drawn from the outlet of the aeration tank of an activated sludge process so as of you all as uh, all of you know that uh, no the secondary treatment in the conventional stp is your activated sludge process an activated sludge process consists of two uh, main units firstly is the aeration unit and next is the secondary set, uh, secondary settle uh, settling unit or secondary settlement tank sst right so now uh, let's understand firstly what is mlss right so uh, mlss uh, you no know, here also they are saying uh, no uh, mlss uh, is nothing but the uh, uh, it is nothing but the name of the sample that we collect from the outlet of the aeration tank right outlet of the aeration tank se jo bhi aapka you no know, uh, uh, jo bhi aapka uh, sample collect hoga usko hum log normally mix liquor bolte hai but generally usko general terms mein hum log usko mlss bolenge that is mixed liquor suspended solids now why it is called as mixed liquor what is the meaning of liquor liquor is you know particularly it is you know it is the other name to alcohol as well right but you know uh, other than that liquor has its own scientific name so liquor is a chemical substrate right or particularly a substrate not uh, you can't say that a uh, you know particularly uh, chemical substrate but it is a substrate in the 
liquid format right and you know aeration tank is the you know aeration tank is the the reactor in which that particular liquor is you now uh, it's uh, the liquor is being treated or processed upon so you no know, liquor is something on which the process will happen liquor is nothing but a substrate which is in the uh, liquid state and you know uh, on which the process happens so aeration tank is the reactor in which you uh, know you have a liquor and in which the aeration process happen right so in aeration tank as i have already told you in aeration tank it is not only the aeration process that happens actually it is the redox reaction that is happening that is reduction oxidation reaction that is happening so in aeration tank there is the chemical uh, substrate which is called as a liquor on which the redox reaction is happening so it is called as a liquor so the chemical uh, the substrate on which the normally the reaction happens is called as the liquor so why it is called as a now mixed liquor particularly it is in the mixed stage because it is not allowed to settle it is continuously mi being mixed so it is a mixed liquor and mostly there will be suspended solid now what is you know uh, in the due course of time we are also going to see what is the main function of aeration tank and on that particular thing you will be understanding why it is named as a mixed liquor suspended solids only right so what is the svi importance of this svi determination svi is used for determining the quality of the sludge produced in an aeration unit and hence its efficiency so particularly what we will be getting to know from the svi is the quality of the sludge produced in an aeration unit and and hence it is uh, its efficiency so uh, when we say that we are going to find out the efficiency of the aeration tank it means that we are going to find out the efficiency of the biological treatment unit because your asp is a biological treatment unit or secondary treatment unit right and in secondary treatment what we do normally is the you no know, we treat upon the biological uh, you no know, uh, we do some biological treatment so this is one of the very important parameter or you can say it is only parameter which will be telling us the uh, you no know, uh, the efficiency of the biological treatment in very less time right so this is very very important you no know? so if someone ask you why why to find out sbi why to do this sbi test so you should be able to tell us that it will be telling me how is the quality of this sludge that is getting formed in the aeration unit and I, because of that i can tell what is the efficiency of the aeration unit uh, that is you know uh, which is doing the aeration process or which is doing the secondary or you know which is doing the biological treatment so it is used for determining the recirculation ratio necessary for maintaining a specified mlss concentration in the uh, reactor so in the you know theory part uh, sir would have been uh, sir would have told you that you know we normally uh, in asp process we normally recirculate uh, the sludge that is settled in the secondary sedimentation tank and the part of the sludge we get you uh, know the, the uh, recirculated sludge we again add it in the aeration tank right so how much quantity of the you uh, know uh, uh, sludge is to be recirculated is decided upon the recirculation ratio and the recirculation ratio can be found out very you know it can be found out with the help of the sludge volume index so very very important to entirely run the uh, you know asp uh, you require a very uh, to find a very precise recirculation ratio and without svi we cannot uh, you know find out recirculation ratio or you know uh, we have to depend upon svi properly so it is also used for estimating the suspended solid concentration in the real circulated sludge so same thing here if you find out what is the recirculation ratio on the basis of the recirculation ratio you will be finding out what is the you know uh, particularly estimating the suspended solid concentration in the recirculated sludge so same thing it is interlinked but you uh, know basically svi is very very important to you know find out what is the quality of the sludge produced and you uh, know uh, you have to you can tell me uh, you know uh, uh, on the basis of svi that what is the efficiency of the aeration uh, you know things that has happened right so now uh, no uh, just to uh, to so just to uh, get a glimpse or just to get re uh, revision uh, of the different treatment units now if you remember uh, we normally you know have uh, the you know pumping station at first after pumping station there is a screen which is uh, which will be uh, removing the floating material after a screen uh, we have a grid chamber which is going to uh, remove the inorganic settleable uh, solids right after uh, uh, grid chamber what we have is we have a pst and in pst we are going to remove the settleable organic 
solids right after psp particularly we have aeration tank in which we are going to so you know we have going to do aeration and in secondary sedimentation tank we are going to you know uh, settle down the sludge that is getting generated in aeration tank right now why aeration tank is being used aeration tank or which uh, which type of pollutants get removed in aeration tank you know or which type of solids that get removed in the aeration tank are aeration tank will remove your non settleable you uh, know non settleable organic solids and non settleable inorganic solids right settleable organic solids have been removed in where the settleable organic solids have been removed in your uh, psp uh, settleable inorganic solids have been removed in the great chamber so which solids are remaining now settle uh, non settleable organic solids non settleable uh, uh, organic solids and lastly the dissolved solids so all type of dissolved solids are remaining to remove so all these type of solids so i am repeating the name of the solids firstly it is non settleable organic solids non settleable inorganic solids and lastly total dissolved solids all these three types of solids are going to get removed in your asp process right specifically how they are going to get removed in the aeration tank what will happen this solids will undergo redox reaction and after going to you know after uh, doing the redox after undergoing the redox reaction what will happen the non settleable inorganic and organic solids and as well as the total dissolved solids will turn into what they will be turning into settleable solids which can be removed in the form of sludge in the secondary sedimentation tank right so this is the total explanation of your spp now how come bod and cod is getting removed the bod and cod is in the wastewater because of the solids only when the solids will get removed no obviously what will happen this bod and cod will get removed right so bod and cod is nothing like you know it is not an alien uh, pollutant right it is bod and cod is because of the solids that are present in the wastewater if you are removing all the solids so what will happen the uh, bod and cod is also going to get you know uh, also going to get reduced uh, also going to get reduced so basically what we do in stp is that you know if we try to picturize what we do in stp is that uh, we remove the solids only right and indirectly the removal of the bod and cod happens and at the last stage when we do you know the chlorination we remove the uh, viruses or the bacteria or the you know uh, microorganisms from it right so this is the very simple aspect of your uh, stp now let's uh, discuss about this uh, you no know, svi test you no know, and uh, what i wanted to tell you that entire year you no know, uh, secondary treatment so the efficiency of the secondary treatment can be judged with the help of the svi volume which is very easy to determine right so now an in uh, imop cone is used for the determination of an svi so let me tell you how this imop cone will look like so its imop cone looks like this say so it is the cone like arrangement it will have it settles on a tripod stand and uh, it has the capacity of 1 liter right so this is how the imop cone will look like and uh, i am hoping that you know uh, you know particularly the activated sludge process so you have a aeration tank firstly and then you have a secondary treatment unit so if you see you know this particularly aeration tank only so in aeration tank you will be having the effluent that is coming from psp then here the aeration process will particularly will uh, take place and what will happen is that you know after this aeration process has been taken place this particular all this liquid along with this uh, you know uh, all this liquid will move in the uh, secondary uh, uh, secondary uh, sedimentation tank in secondary sedimentation tank you will be seeing that you now the the sludge will get uh, you know uh, what will happen the sludge will get settled right and uh, a clean supernatant will be obtained so part of this particular sludge will get be again this part of this sludge will again get recirculated uh, in the aeration tank now why this uh, sludge is getting recirculated mari sir would have already told you this particular sludge is called as an activated sludge and why it is called as an activated sludge because it consists of activated microorganisms the microorganisms which are ready to uh, uh, no to uh, process on the uh, solids right uh, so this particular microorganisms are very very helpful and you know hence the part of this particular microorganisms is already you know it is 
added here so this microorganisms are active they are hungry and because of their activeness and the hungriness what will happen they will be doing the process in a more faster manner so you no know, just in, uh, so the part of the sludge is you know it is always always recycled in the aeration tank and you know now that spi experimentation we are going to do it will you know particularly uh, test what is the efficiency of your aeration tank right so you know we, this particular your emof cone will be acting as a secondary सेडिमेंटेशन टैंक ओनली राइट तो ये आपका जो सेकेंडरी सेडिमेंटेशन टैंक है ना उसके जैसा ही ये सेकेंडरी सेडिमेंटेशन टैंक ऐसे ही शेप का होता है नॉर्मली आप अगर देखोगे तो ये कोन लाइक की शेप होता है तो ऊपर की तरफ नो वेट इज है बिगर डायमेंशन एंड एट नो एट एट दी बॉटम दी डायमेंशन विल गो ऑन डिक्रीजिंग सो दिस पर्टिकुलरली द इम ऑफ कोन इज बिंग नो सिलेक्टेड ओनली बिकॉज इट हैज दी नो दी एपेरियंस और दी स्ट्रक्चर एज ऑफ यूर secondary sedimentation tank only right so you know uh, anima cone is used for determining the svr this represents effectively the principle and working of the secondary settling tank in an aerobic biological system so your ima cone is nothing but an ima cone will you know uh, effectively represent the principle and working of the secondary settling tank in aerobic biological system so in the absence of the ima cone so if there is an absence of ima cone you can use A thousand ml graduated cylinder, for particularly for the field test. But it is you know, if you are doing the lab scale experimentation, emof cone gives you better results. So even if you compare the emof cone and thousand ml graduated cylinder, one liter emof cone will definitely give you the better results. Now very importantly, the volume of sludge ml, uh, you know, in ml settled in 30 minutes per gram of ml is varies from 25 to 200. that means your svi so this is nothing but your no this is nothing but your definition of svi only so your svi value will uh, no vary between 25 to 200 depending upon the quality of the sludge as the purpose of the biological aeration is to convert the non settleable organic suspended solids into a settleable mass low svi values indicate quality of sludge produced and high efficiencies of the bod removal that means that your bio no spi value should be less lower is the spi value no higher is the efficiency of your aeration tank that means the quality of the sludge produced is also very very high so low spi values here very important thing that you uh, know you need to understand low spi values indicate high quality of sludge produced and high efficiencies of bod removal so now as B, as spi values goes on increasing it affects the quality of the sludge and it also no particularly tells us that the efficiency of the bod removal is less right so i think that you have understood up till now and there is no confusion now this particular table and uh, no the explanation below it carries a very good significance right so now associated operation so if my spi value is in the range of 150 to 200 right so the process name is called as the high rate process and you will be seeing that the mlss concentration that is getting generated is very less so it is in the range of 500 to 1000 why it is very less because you know particularly the process is not going properly and because of that uh, there is no mlss formation uh, in that so uh, why when mlss formation will be more uh, mlss formation will be more when the uh, when the uh, no uh, non settleable organic and inorganic solids as well as the dissolved uh, total dissolved solids will you know get converted into settleable solids so when all these uh, non settleable solids are getting converted into settleable solids the mlss concentration increases but as you see here the svi value is in the range of 150 to 200 so i have already told you if svi value is more that means that it is a poor quality sludge and the process is not good and you know efficiency is also not good so if you can see the mlss concentration uh, is uh, very less here again the food to microorganism ratio the food to microorganisms ratio is in the range of 0.5 to one so aeration that we normally do for such a uh, svi no so if we are going to do if we are if we get such type of svi in the, the normal aeration time that is uh, utilized by the stp by the operator is 3 to 4 hours only right and you know the uh, average sludge this particularly is not you know particularly the average sludge is only 5 days and the bod removal efficiency you get as 60 to 75% only right so bod exp removal efficiency should be more than 90% at every stage 
but here if you are having the sqr value more so now that currently means that you now the uh, uh, bod removal efficiency will be less and the quality of the sludge will be poor now why this particularly is happening 150 to 200 this is because because it the stp is not operated properly if the stp is not operated properly you will be getting the sqr values on the higher side plus you no know, uh, the bod removal efficiency is less and you know the quality of the sludge is poor so why this happens is that particularly now let's say that uh, it has been told by the designer that the uh, aeration time for you know aeration time should be 12 hours and that operator or that particular you uh, know uh, of the company to avoid uh, the cost of energy they are only aerating for 3 to 4 hours right so it has been already told for 12 hours and they are aerating for 3 to 4 hours only so naturally what is going to happen is that the mlss that will be going to get uh, generate will be uh, having less concentration and you can see we will, will be generating a poor quality sludge and the bod removal efficiency is also not good right so now what happens if the you know uh, if the uh, sqr value is in between uh, 50 to 100 uh, 50 to 150 uh, uh, ml per gram so the process uh, is called as the conventional process mlss you know, now will be seeing that you know uh, the as sqr value is in uh, as the SPI value is decreasing, you will be seeing that the MLSS concentration is good, right? Because now that the SPI value is good, the concentration of the, you know, uh, the concentration of the uh, settleable solids increase in your aeration tank. Also, you can see the FM ratio is good, going to get reduced. Why? Lesser is the FM ratio, higher is the efficiency of BOD removal. Mark it somewhere, right? Or remember it somewhere. Higher is, you know, sorry, lower is the food to microorganism ratio your you know for the uh, bod removal efficiency will be more why the food to microorganisms ratio is decreasing or why it is good to have lower food to microorganisms ratio because what will happen uh, no food to microorganisms ratio is lower if microorganisms are more right and if microorganisms are more what will happen they will eat down the food very easily and your food is nothing but your bod Right. So when the food to microorganisms ratio is lower, that means that the microorganisms are on the higher side. So the food will get utilized very easily. And food here is nothing but your BOD. And here you can see earlier it was 60 to 75 percent. But now that the food to microorganisms ratio got reduced from this value to this value, see the BOD removal efficiency has increased. Right. So for you no, know, particularly here we are initially we were telling that the quality of the sludge is poor. But at this particular stage, you know, it is uh, you know, particularly uh, not poor and not excellent, but it is good quality sludge, right? So normally, you know, you get, uh, you know, uh, in conventional STPs, uh, you get uh, this uh, SPI value in the range of 50 to 150, which suggests that the quality of the sludge that is going to get generated is uh, you know, uh, comparatively good and the BOD removal efficiency is 80 to 90 percent. Now, very importantly, if I'm doing extended aeration, so here only in the name only it is suggesting that if, I, if the aeration period is extended, so if extended aeration happens, you can see the SPI value, it is going to get reduced and good and the reduced SPI values are always good, right? So 25 to 150 is the SPI value that we get, right? So lower is the SPI value, you know, what will be happening is that higher will be the quality of the sludge so excellent quality sludge will be you know obtained and this excellent quality sludge will be very very helpful for us and why it will be helpful for us that will be understanding in the next uh, no next uh, discussion but yeah you can compare the you no know, mlss that is going to get generated so the mlss concentration has increased because what has happened because of the extended aeration the amount of the settleable solids are now increased or you can say the uh, you know, non-settleable organic inorganic solids and the total dissolved solids have you know, got converted into the settleable solids and hence the you know, uh, the what you can say the uh, concentration of MLSS is increasing. Here you can see you know, previously it was 0.2 to 0.5. So here you know uh, the food to microorganisms ratio is you know uh, on the lower side. That means that there are more microorganisms that are present in comparison with the food. And you know, you'll be seeing that the BOD removal efficiency is now 90 to 98 percent, and the quality of the sludge that is getting generated is excellent. Now, you now uh, compare the aeration time as well, right? So uh, previously it was only three to four hours, but if we 
do it for 6 to 10 hours if the aeration is to be done for 6 to 10 hours the bod removal efficiency will increase and the quality of sludge will also increase so 24 by you know here you can see it is extended aeration right so the uh, aeration time will be you know uh, it will be obviously more and because of that what will happen is that you will be getting you know uh, uh, you will be getting uh, good quality uh, sludge because of the extended aeration so now what i mean by you know uh, you know uh, when you uh, uh, if i go for oral examination uh, i normally ask the students now they tell me sir if spi value is uh, you know uh, uh, in the range of 150 to 200 it is called as the poor quality sludge they tell me if it, uh, it is uh, between 25 to 50 it is a uh, you know it is excellent quality sludge and then they i ask them what is the meaning of quality you know what is the meaning of excellent quality sludge And what is the meaning of poor quality sludge and what is the good quality sludge and many of these students do not you know have answer for this now i'll be telling you the answer for this and it is to be remembered now it is not to be remembered just for the oral sec but uh, you no know, oral uh, sec per uh, you know but you will have to you know uh, remember it for your entire you know if you are going to uh, do this for uh, your environmental engineering so for that uh, sake as well uh, you'll have to uh, you know so don't study for oral sake only you'll have to study it for you no know, application sake right so i'll be telling you how this excellent uh, what is the difference between the excellent quality sludge and the poor quality uh, sludge so for excellent quality uh, sludge is that particular sludge which do not have active organic content into it or you can say the excellent quality sludge is a stabilized sludge right stabilized sludge matlab you do not have to do any further process and you can directly utilize it so you know it is inert in nature as if your soil soil particularly is inert in the nature it is stabilized it do not have any chemical reactivity right so it is just like your soil uh, no so that is your excellent sludge you do not have to give any further treatment before disposal of this extended area uh, before uh you no know, before disposal of this excellent quality sludge right but now if you are having a poor quality sludge what will happen is that you no know, before disposal of this poor quality sludge you need to give treatment now when i say that poor quality sludge it is unstabilized sludge uh, in it is unstabilized sludge and it contains lot of active organic content into it right so we have to stabilize this sludge and then we can dispose of it into nature right so how to stabilize this particular poor quality sludge it is being done with the help of the anaerobic digesters right so when we will be going for the site visit you know you'll be you know you'll be getting to know that there are anaerobic digesters and the anaerobic digester stabilize the sludge that is getting generated from pst as well as sst so but if you have a poor you no know, if you have a poor quality sludge then all your sludge is to be taken to the uh to the anaerobic digester and then you will have to treat it and then after that after complete treatment then it can be disposed but if there is an excellent quality sludge if you have a very excellent quality sludge so this sludge do not need to get into the uh, anaerobic digester you can directly use this sludge as a fertilizer or uh, you can you know treat it as the soil only or you can dispose it at any uh, point uh, in a you know in a very sustainable manner no need of treatment right so you no know, if you are doing good aeration uh, or you are generating excellent quality sludge you particularly you no know, you uh, you uh, save the money that is uh, you no know, that is required for the construction of the anaerobic digester and plus you will be also saving the money for the operation and maintenance of the anaerobic digester right so it is very 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 important right so what are the properties of the excellent quality sludge so sludge produced in an aeration system is considered excellent if it settles easily occupies minimum value it is also granular and highly mineralized so if you take it between the fingers you will be seeing that it is highly granular right so and also it is highly mineralized that means that it is a good fertilizer so it dewaters and dries easily so without odor nuisance so sludge to be wasted from extended aeration systems with svi in the range of 25 to 50 uh, ml per gram can be discharged into the sludge drying bed directly without the need of stabilization in the anaerobic digester so this is very important so if your sludge produced in the aeration system is excellent uh, you can particularly dispose of without the need of stabilization in the anaerobic digester and that saves 
lot of money to the you know uh, to the corporation which is uh, uh, particularly handling and all those particular thing right so similarly the, the reverse case will happen sludge from the aeration tank of a conventional or standard rate asp with spi around 100 ml per gram is a good quality sludge but inferior to sludge produced by extended aeration so it has a pollution load so you no know, your this particular good quality sludge is also not as uh, no good as uh, excellent quality so this also need the stabilization right so you no know, it has a pollution load and requires stabilization in a digester before drying right so if it is a good quality sludge uh, then also you will have to go for removal of the pollution load that means you will have to stabilize it and then only you can dispose it up right so the sludge from the aeration tank uh, with a poor quality where you have an spi like 150 to 200 ml per gram is a poor quality poor in quality it is highly odorous high in volume sticky it is not granular it is sticky and it has a very high pollutant right so it is unfit for disposal without the proper digestion so that is to be remembered right so you compulsorily you have to give your anaerobic digester to satellite now though this particular thing uh, happens and to you know uh, appears to be uh very simple but uh, there are a lot of uh, processes in which the sludge bulking tank uh, can take place so now sometimes it may so happen that your svi value is more than 200 ml per gram right so we are normally expecting the svi value in the range of like 100 or in the range of 25 to 50 but in many cases it may so happen that the svi value is more than 200 ml per gram that means that no uh, very high volume is required for settlement of 1 gram of sludge so here what is happening the sludge produced is the uh, in the biological aeration system is said said uh, to be bulk right so it is said to be bulk and that activity is called as a or that operation that is happening is called as the sludge bulking so it is not you know it is not good to have sludge bulking in your stp right so sludge bulking is happening that means that sludge is not settling it is moving in the upside direction right it is not going to get settled but it is going to reach towards the surface or it is lying uh, the sludge is uh, no into suspension it is not going to get settled so that is not good even if you keep uh, the uh, no the effluent in the sludge uh, sludge uh, secondary sludge uh, uh, for sorry secondary settlement tank for like 10 days the sludge is not going to settle because it has already bulked right so sludge bulking is not at all advisable so sludge bulking is a major operational problem which increases the effluent bod and decreases the process efficiency right so basically you no know, sludge bulking is not good you don't you know even if uh, you no know, all the processes we have done properly and uh, because of the faulty aeration tank you will be getting lot of uh, bod into it and you know it is uh, the high bod will be expected in the effluent as well so what are the causes of the bulking so there are mainly two causes of the bulking either your effluent will be faulty or the process that you are going to do is faulty nothing more than that right so aapka jo effluent hai uska characteristics kuch aapka kya rahega poor characteristic ka effluent aa gaya ya aap jo aapko jo aap wahan pe operation kar rahe ya jisse ne bhi plant ko design kiya hai wo kya hoga that particular design and the operation is poor in the nature so these are the two main causes so either it is the poor characteristics of the waste water or it is the poor plant design and operation so what are the poor characteristics so frequent variation in the quantity and the quality of the influent right so you know there is no uniformity in the quantity of uh, the pollutant reaching the stp and there is also no uniformity in the quality of the pollutant that is reaching reaching the stp so if so is the uh, so you know you will be getting this sludge bulking so uh, many times it may happen that uh, due to some uh, no activity so due to some chemical industry that has uh, put uh, some uh, no uh, chemical into the waste water the ph get reduced and below ph 5 there are some no uh, sub uh, filamentous organisms that will get generate such as no uh, bagiota and uh, uh, it is paralotis and that particular uh, microorganisms are filamentous in nature filamentous in nature matlab kya पर्टिक्युलरली नो द बॉडी इज आळई सारखे असतात मोठ मोठे असतात फिलामेंटस इन नेचर असतात एंड दिस मल्टी सेल्युलर ऑर्गनिझम्स गेट वॉटर एंड ट्रेंड एंड रिमेन सस्पेंडेड विदाउट सेटलिंग डाउन इन एसएसटी सो दिस पर्टिक्युलर माइक्रो ऑर्गनिझम्स व्हाट विल डू दे पर्टिक्युलरली विल रिमेन इन द वॉटर इन द सस्पेंशन स्टेज एंड दे वोंट बी सेटलिंग बिकॉज ऑफ दैट व्हाट विल हैपन द बीओडी विल इंक्रीज एंड द स्लज विल गेट बल्क सो वी हैव लो टेंपरेचर रिजल्टिंग इन डिक्रीज बैक्टीरियल एक्टिविटी सो 
though i am saying that the aeration tank uh, there is the redox reaction that is happening but the redox reaction is happening or the you no know, the redox reaction that has been uh, that has been done it is because of the biological uh, it is because of the microorganisms right so you no know, because at low temperature for example you no know, uh, we keep something in fridge at below 4 degrees celsius so why because we uh, reduce the bacterial activity so here also if the temperature is low for example you no know, when the countries like russia in the winter season the you know the water get uh, uh, you know the water get frozen so at such point the bacterial activity is zero so in that case the svi will be more so if you have low uh, very low nutrients in the wastewater then also this case may arise high carbohydrates contribute to sludge bulking that is also the uh, case that may arise right now poor plant design and operation if you do that also will happen so if you are doing insufficient uh, aeration I have, it has been told that 12 hours of aeration is required and you are doing it only for 3 to 4 hours then that will particularly you know uh, hamper the process insufficient mixing of the recirculated sludge again yeah so if the recirculation ratio is not found out properly the amount of recirculated sludge uh, that will be you know the amount of sludge that will be recirculated will be less and again uh, the insufficient uh, mixing of the recirculated uh, sludge will hamper or it will be uh, it will be uh, helping for the sludge bulking so uh, okay no very high fm ratio so i already told that the fm ratio should be as low as possible so if you are having high microorganism uh, high food to microorganism ratio that means that no your food is more that is it is called as the organic overloading so if your food is more uh, what will happen the sludge bulking will be happening insufficient hydraulic retention time you are not or particularly less aeration or less uh, hydraulic retention time will also result for uh, sludge bulking insufficient uh, sludge retention time the retention time of uh, or the detention time of the water in necessity is to be kept for as 2 hours but you uh, know uh, will happen that particular sludge is you know uh, putrescible sludge or it will start reaction uh, proper you uh, know immediately and it may develop the anaerobic condition and because of that sludge bulking may happen so is there any control measure yeah so if you find that that is happening in the stp there are in a uh, no emergency control measure so controlled chlorination of uh, bulk sludge uh, you know uh, so if there are microorganisms that are produced uh, filamentous microorganisms are there so you can put uh, do the chlorination control it is also uh, uh, controlled chlorination processes to be done so that microorganisms will die reaeration of the return sludge on the recycle line is also to be done so this is also very important long term control measures particularly have to do some modification and improvement in the characteristics and modification and the improvement of the design of the operational parameters is also to be done so how this uh, no uh, svi is to be determined very simple and uh, you know uh, easy to understand uh, step svi determines uh, determination is based on estimating the volume of the sludge uh, settled in 30 minutes per gram of ml for that uh, what we require is emof cone you know if the emof cone is not there you can have 1000 ml measuring jar as well we require some uh, no we require 50 ml measuring cylinder we require crucibles we require 250 ml uh, watman filter paper number 40 with funnel and a tripod stand and we require very importantly the hot air hose so what we are going to do first is the you no know, we are going to take exactly 1 liter of mixed liquor sample so what is this mixed liquor sample mixed liquor sample is the sample that we have collected from the output out or uh, no Uh, uh, on the uh, from the output side of your aeration tank, right? So after your all aeration has completed, the sample has been collected from the uh, aeration tank, and this is called as the mixed liquor. Sample. So we are going to take exactly one liter of uh, mixed liquor sample from aeration tank and allow it to settle in an emof cone. So how much minute we have to keep it settling? Only for 30 minutes. So record the volume of the sludge V per ml at the end. 30 minutes so what will happen when we are keeping this uh, in the secondary uh, we are keeping it in the emof cone it will behave uh, as if it is a secondary 
sedimentation tank and the sludge will get uh, settled so after 30 minutes getting settled you know uh, that we have to note down right so there are graduations that are made and with the help of the graduations you can particularly find out how much is the cell the, uh, how much is the sludge that get settled now what is the next thing what we have to do here is we have to find out the total solids and total dissolved solids but as it is a mixed liquor will be calling it as mixed liquor total solids and mixed liquor dissolved solids so you know we uh, you, uh, i hope you remember how we found find out the total solids so what we'll be taking is that uh, we'll be taking an empty crucible we'll be weighing that particular crucible we are going to stir the content in the mf cone right so properly stir karke sample lene ka or you no know, uh, we can take either it 50 ml or 25 ml depending upon the uh expected solids uh, no uh, here and then what we are going to do is we are going to keep uh, this sample along with the crucible in the crucible for the hot air oven for water to get evaporated right after the you know after uh, after the water has got uh, evaporated we are going to cool the crucible and uh, going to take uh, the uh, weight of the crucible along with the solids and uh, you know we'll be calling it as wt gram right we are going to take another uh, crucible all right uh, so this particularly you know this uh, process will help us to get the mixed liquor total solids right so this is uh, total solids procedure only but as the sample that we have used is mlss we call it as mlts that is mixed liquor total solids it is nothing but this w2 minus w1 that is now the solids into 1000 into 1000 divided by sample taken so you can take 50 ml sample or 25 ml sample doesn't matter right similarly we are going to find out total dissolved solids so for that we are going to take another uh, no uh, uh, crucible uh, that is crucible b and we are going to take its empty weight so now we are going to collect a filtrate here which is going to pass through the watson filter number 40 and you know we are going to collect the filtrate and uh, no the filtrate we are going to evaporate to dryness so that will be giving us the total uh, dissolved solids but as we have used mlss it will be called as mlds so it will be what it will be this w4 minus w3 gram you uh, know uh, into 1000 into 1000 this is just for the conversion sake and the you know uh, it is uh, divided by the original sample of the taken so what we require is mlss right so we require the information about the mlss and you uh, know uh, it can be found out MLTS minus MLDS. So no, it is nothing but the suspended solids is equal to total solids minus total dissolved solids. So that formula we have found out, and that we are going to keep it at the bottom as a denominator, right? So here we are going to use the volume, right? We have calculated, firstly noted out the volume of the sludge that has been uh, settled. So no, SVI value is V into thousand divided by MLSS, right? And that particular value is nothing but the SVI. right so i won't be describing much about uh, other thing but uh, this is how the spi will be formed now normally you know when we go for the oral we ask students what is the unit of uh, spi right so the unit of spi is what it is you know uh, particularly i don't know if you have noted the unit of spi the unit of spi is ml per gram so we tell students to you know derive this particular unit now this unit is you know that not that tough to you know uh, uh, what you can say derive but they do some mistake in the dimensional analysis for example they only write uh, the unit of uh, v here is ml per liter right so we have taken 1 liter and uh, the volume of the sludge is recorded in ml so if you put uh, that is the unit of uh, v should be ml per liter so if you take only ml the unit of spi that you are going to get after you know the dimensional analysis will be something different only so what why this 1000 has been uh, taken here because we have to convert uh, the gram into milligram so for that particular thing we'll have to multiply it by 1000 so and the mls that is already mg per liter so this spi is you know can be uh, found out by using this particular formula again when we find out what is this spi we can you know uh, tell with the help of this particular you know uh, table that what is the you know uh, what is the value of sp say it is like 82 that we have obtained so 82 is between this particular range so it is a conventional process that has being followed 
the sludge quality is good and the expected BOD remolation efficiency is 80 to 90 percent. Right. So that we have to you know particularly judge. So I'm hoping that you have understood this experimentation. I'll be uploading the videos as you know this particular technical problem is solved in a day or two because it may be because of the server failure because of these rails. So I'll be hope you know I'm hoping that uh, this will get solved in a day or two and that I can upload the videos as well. So uh, in the chat section, you uh, know we can stop here. But in the chat section, please tell me if you have understood this. Uh, no, uh, or not, and uh, then we can uh, stop in this lecture. Just tell me if you have understood or not, because you know it is uh, simple, and I have tried it to explain it uh, very elaborately and uh, you know, in, uh, practical and keeping the practical cognizance uh, in picture. Can you please tell me in the chat section if you have understood or not? All of you, don't wait for. If you have understood, you can write understood. If you have not understood, do not write understood. Okay, some of them have uh, written that they have understood. If you haven't understood, or if there is any concept that you need to understand, feel free to ask any time because you know um, uh, I like clearing the doubts, and uh, I'm very much interested in this all processes. I do it. Uh, you know, uh, I I like to uh, understand all these processes. So I'll be making you understand through the video as well. And uh, if in uh, case if you want to not understand by the video or anything that I'll be very happy to clear all your doubts uh, by referring some reference books or the reference papers. Right. So this is a uh, few of the practical that we have seen. And uh, uh, no, always remember SVI is the practical that is done on daily basis or if any, you know, if any, uh, 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 if there is any surprise visit of like say a district collectorate and uh, you no, know, he visits an STP. Uh, he was getting some, uh, no, particularly complaints. Or a municipal commissioner comes and uh, he visits an STP. So uh, if he has the knowledge, what is he will be doing? He will be telling to you know, uh, take a one liter sample from the aeration outlet of the aeration tank, and you no, know, he will be telling to keep it in the SVI for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, he will be you no, know, uh, just noting the volume of the sludge. If the volume of the sludge, you no, know, if, uh, if the Sludge is not getting settled in 30 minutes properly. So he he gets an idea that you no, know, the uh, the particularly the aeration process or the secondary treatment is not happening properly, and then he can penalize that particular operator or that particular company, right? So many of you are you no know, doing the preparation for IS, IES, uh, no, or no particular maybe in future you get uh, to work as a you know, you may get a, a chance to work as a municipal commissioner. Or a district collector, uh, collector, and if you visit such particular STP, so I recommend you to particularly, uh, no, 30 minutes. Uh, you normally, when uh, a municipal commissioner or a uh, IS officer won't be visiting more than 30 minutes to a particular site because of his uh, busy schedule. But the uh, 30 minutes will be there, and uh, in the, you know, if you are visiting, you no, know, uh, uh, at the start only tell them to collect the sample from the aeration outlet of the aeration tank and uh, do the uh, experimentation keep it for settling in 30 minutes and then you can judge it with the help of the you know volume of the sludge that is getting settled if the volume of the sludge that is getting settled is huge so that means that the process happening is good so at the supernatant you will be seeing a clear water right but in supernatant if you are seeing uh, no there is lot of turbidity in the supernatant then you can tell that this process is not happening and you can uh, put a uh, no you can put a complete inquiry on that particular plant with the help of the laboratory uh, no uh, registered laboratories and then you can check whether you know they, they are following the entire processes properly or not so most of the stps do not uh, no uh, follow the process properly because to generate the profit Right, so because operation and maintenance is given to a private firm, and uh, to uh, no, minimize their costs, they normally do not uh, go with the design standards, and because of that, we normally get uh, 
a polluted water in our river streams and all those particular things so you know if you get a chance uh, to you know uh, uh, have a surprise visit or uh, as a officer uh, to the you know for plants uh, to your uh, this thing at uh, your jurisdiction so you know, normally do this and you'll be you know it is very easy test right a visual inspection test but otherwise you know svi if there uh, in 30 minutes you cannot find out svi you require at least 24 hours to find out svi but uh, if, uh, anyone has a you know anyone having a sense of environmental engineering can uh, judge it with the help of uh, only 30 minutes with the help of the settlement of the sludge that is happening in the uh, you know uh, imop cone or a 1000 ml uh, uh, measuring cylinder and you can uh, only with the visual inspection he can get an idea so you no know, follow the trick and uh, you'll be getting you know uh, the status of that stp in 30 minutes or so we are going to see how to uh, perform the practical for uh, determination of the sludge volume in the case of the svi so as uh, explained in the uh, the uh, explanation video Uh, you would have got that this particular process. You now, what we are going to do is we are going to, you know, uh, replicate the secondary sedimentation tank of, with the help of this uh, imop cone, right? One liter imop cone. So this is the sample that we have brought. So this is called as the, you know, this uh, the sample has been brought uh, after the aeration process has been completed in the aeration tank in the STP, right? So this complete aeration process is completed, and after aeration process, if you remember in the activated sludge process. what happens is that this aerated uh, completely aerated uh, sewage uh, water or the waste water is then you know uh, passed uh, to the secondary sedimentation tank for the settling purpose right so the amount of this sludge that is going to settle in 30 minutes that we are going to determine so what they have told in the procedure is that they have to take exactly 1 liter of the uh, uh, sample uh, right the sample is called as the analysis And uh, as this has been brought from the aeration tank, no? so we have to uh, take exactly one liter sample. So in the in the imop cone, you can see there is a one thousand uh, ml mark here. So we have to fill this uh, sample, and we will have to wait uh, till thirty minutes. And after thirty minutes, we are going to measure how much sludge is being settled in the you no know, uh, uh, in this imop cone. So you can see this is an empty. Thing uh, I have stirred this uh, sample, right, and then I am pouring it into the imop cone. Right, so we need some more sample. More sample has been added. You can see the thousand ml of uh, mark here that we have touched. So what will happen if you see this? Uh, uh, this sludge is going to settle uh, in this imop cone, right? So the quantity of this sludge that is going to settle, uh, we are going to measure it in ml. Then we are going to find out ml ts. We are going to find out ml ds so that we get ml ss value, and that we are going to put into the formula. Right, so V into thousand divided by MLSS. So we'll be getting the value of V uh, uh, with uh, from the same of code. MLSS we'll have to find out. Right. So we are going to keep it for thirty minutes and let's observe after thirty minutes what is the value. Right. Okay. Just thirty uh, minutes uh, and uh, we'll have to check how much ml of uh, uh, how much ml of the sludge has been settled into this. Right. We have finished uh, 30 minutes, uh, and uh, we are going to find out uh, how much ml of this sludge is settled in this uh, imop cone. So you can see uh, the superintendent layer, and lastly is the sludge layer. So same phenomena will occur in your secondary sedimentation tank. So if if you uh, provide some retention time, the sludge will settle, and the superintendent will be taken for the further operation of uh, for the chlorination tank, right? So now what we are going to do is we are going to know to what is this V. right so we are going to measure this volume uh, here directly if you see so you know, particularly it is slightly below the 300 ml uh, you know slightly below 350 ml mark right so how to measure this we'll have to take a scale and by with the help of the interpolation we can measure this right so we can you know, particularly will have to measure so for you know uh, from 300 to 400 it is approximately 1.7 
yeah it is okay sorry it is 2.7 cm right so it is 2.7 cm for 100 ml and hence uh, we can measure this as well so this is 1.1 right so you know we can move for like this so 1.1 into 100 divided by 2.7 right and plus we will have to do this 300 right so the total volume of v comes out to be 340.74 ml and that we have to write down so we'll have to note down what is the total ml of the sludge so v is equal to 340.74 now the next thing what we require in the formula for finding out the svi is the mlss right so how we are going to find out mlss mlss means mixed liquor suspended solids so you know the formula we have seen in the solids how we can find out the total suspended solids it is the total solids minus the total dissolved solids so here we are going to you know do the same manner we are going to find out mlts that is mixed liquor total solids we are going to subtract mlds that is mixed liquor total uh, dissolved solids from uh, mlts and then we are going to get the mlss so for that what we require from the same for the same sample we are going to find out the mlts that is mixed liquor total solids and mixed liquor dissolved solids so the concept remains same or the procedure remains same so the same procedure that we have applied for finding out the total solids is going to be repeated here the same procedure that we have uh, followed for the uh, for the total dissolved solids uh, is going to repeat here for the mlds so what we are going to do is we are going to take any ppt a uh, damage uh, sorry we are going to take one uh, pipette a uh, damage pipette pipette can also be you know taken and what we have to do is we have to stir this sample right a proper stirring of this uh, sample is to be done right so what you can do uh, after stirring is that many times it may so happen that uh, the Uh, sample will start to settle again. so you can remove it in the you know uh, in this uh, measurement uh, cylinder as well sorry major uh, uh, the glass beaker as well and then uh, you can or complete practice now that we have removed all this sample from it what we can do is now we have to take you know the sample for mlts and mlds so what we are going to do is we are going to uh, take 25 ml as this contains huge number of solids right so we are going to take 25 ml of sample the prior to that what we have to do we have to take the empty weights of the crucible so what i am going to do is i am have named this crucible right so here you can see 1 and 2 so let me take it here so here you can see i have written the value of v which is 340.74 the unit is very important it is ml per liter so now here we are going to take the reading with respect for finding out the mlts so we are going to write down the empty crucible weights for crucible 1 and 2 1 and 2 and uh, then we are going to keep it uh, for you know the evaporation of the water in our uh, hot air oven for 24 hours at a temperature range of 103 to 105 degrees celsius similarly we are going to find out mlds for that also we will have to take the empty crucible weights and uh, crucible 3 and 4 are meant for finding out the uh, mlds and again final weight will be taken by keeping this crucibles for 24 hours in a hot air oven for in the temperature range of 103 to 105 degrees celsius so let's take uh, the you know uh, the weights of crucible 1 and 2 or uh, we can say all the uh, weights of all the crucibles so it is 48.952 
right so we have taken the empty uh, weights of these crucibles so crucible 1 and 2 will be taken first right and we are going to put 25 ml of sample each in this crucible right and the sample again uh, we will have to stir it properly then we will have to take it Every time you take the you know, uh, sample, make sure that you are stirring it properly. Now what we are going to do next is we are going to pass this sample and collect uh, the, uh, going to pass the sample through this Wattman filter paper number 40 and then we are going to collect the, the filter right so I made a fold keeping it here From which we are going to collect, uh, or in which we are going to collect the filter. So again, stirring the sample and taking the 25 ml sample and passing it uh, to you know, through this is going to be repeated. Right, so what we are going to do is we are going to keep all these crucibles in a, a hot air oven uh, for 24 hours in the temperature range of 103 to 105 degrees Celsius and then we are going to take the final weight. We will be doing the calculations for MLTS, MLDS and then we will be getting MLSS and the values will be the value of V and the value of uh, this MLSS will be substituted uh, to get the value of SVR. Right? So we are going to keep this. Uh, meanwhile, we are going to wait uh, to collect all this filtrate and then we will be keeping it in the hot air. Okay, we are going to see the uh, sludge volume index calculation and also the uh, SVI term work form. So we have taken the sample from STB at ECOD and according to the experimentation that we have done, the value of the V that is the volume of the settled sludge in uh, ml per liter that we have got is 340.74, right? Uh, so uh, these values of uh, are uh, of, uh, of MLSS and SVR are calculated, and the calculation part has been uh, explained below. So for finding out uh, the very first step is to find out the mixed liquor total solids. The formula is given as here. So substituting the values. So we have taken, if you remember, we have taken two uh, sets. That is for crucible A and crucible B for uh, MLTS and crucible C and crucible D for MLDS. So according to the formula W2 minus uh, W1, so here the values are being put and uh, you get uh, the values as a 6000 mg per liter, right? Similarly for crucible B, uh, we have put the values of W2 and W1 and uh, we have got uh, the value as 5920 mg per liter. So there were two sets, we have taken the average and the average value has come out to be 5960 mg per liter. Uh, crucible C and Crucible D are being used for uh, finding out the mixed uh, liquor dissolved solids. So the formula here will have a slight change. It will be W4 minus 
W3 and uh, the uh, recorded values are being put in the formula and uh, we get uh, the ML uh, DS value as 400 mg per liter. Similarly for crucible D which is another set for MLDS we have put uh, uh, no, we have substituted the values that we got uh, during the experimentation and uh, no, the value that comes out of it uh, for 80 mg per liter. So the average value of about two values for MLDS comes out to be 440 mg per liter. Right. So we know that uh, MLSS is nothing but your mixed liquor suspended solids is nothing but MLTS that is mixed liquor total solids minus MLDS that is mixed liquor dissolved solids. So substituting the values of MLTS and MLDS, we get the value of ML uh, SS as uh, 5520. So the SVI, we already have the SVI formula. So just to uh, just by substituting the values, uh, we get that uh, the SVI value is 61.72 uh, ml per gram. Now, no, according to this particular uh, value, what we can say is that the quality of the sludge is good because it is in the uh, uh, range of uh, no, 50 to 150. So the value of the quality of the sludge is good, but that doesn't mean that the sludge is stabilized, right? So, however, the sludge is unstabilized and requires to undergo stabilization process. And uh, no, uh, uh, it, uh, the stabilization pro process can vary, but here I have suggested that uh, it should uh, go in anaerobic digester, which is one of the way of uh, uh, stabilizing this uh, unstabilized sludge, right? So these were the uh, readings of the experimentation for the term work part. I have uh, you know, uh, taken uh, the values, uh, no, the, uh, the description of STP aeration tank A and STP aeration tank B. So I have given you the V value for both of this uh, uh, samples and the readings of W1, W2, W3 and W4 for each of these samples have been given. It, uh, it, uh, only one set of readings were taken. That means that there were only one crucible for you know, uh, finding out MLDS and one crucible for finding out MLDS. Same way, say one crucible for MLDS and one crucible for MLDS. So uh, you have to do the calculations and you can you know, uh, find out what are the values of MLSS and SVI and uh, remarks can be written. Again, you'll have to write the conclusion as well.